Hello everybody and welcome. So today we're going to be taking care of one of my kind of annoyances about this 261BH. Whenever we bought it, uh, we knew this going in, that it had a fan in the kitchen slash living area, one in the bathroom, but in the bedroom, it only had a vent, no power fan. So today we're going to fix that. Uh, in one of the previous videos you saw where I installed the Vortex 2 in the, li in the living slash kitchen and in the bathroom, today we're going to run one in the bedroom. And I'm going to show you all how to do that, or not really how to, but how I did that. So uh, let's just get right on into it, okay? To do this fan, we got to drop the surround. We have a little pillow in here to help block the light a little bit. Uh, you can still use this with the uh, Vortex 2s. Uh, it squeezes in just fine. But we were using it this past weekend because... We kind of wanted to sleep a little late and the light, it was enough to bug us. So, pillow. Stick that out of the way. Go ahead and take your screw out of your handle. That's what you're taking out. And take your four screws from your surround. You can use a power screwdriver, but I prefer manual so you don't strip the threads or the head and there's the surround and same as the others you have two screws to pull the actual screen off okay so now the problem and i'm i bet you've already seen this there's no power here how are we going to get power I would say easy, but I don't know yet. We're going to see. I'm going to see if I can run a fish tape up through this cavity here. Um, let me get my other camera and I'll show you. Okay, so I'm going to see if we can run through this cavity or that. That way, well, I guess that way to the kitchen fan and tie off of there. Originally, I had thought about trying to find a way to run down this wall since it goes down to the panel itself, but trying to find a way to get there is going to be very interesting. Okay, and since we're going to have to pull power from this one, we need to go ahead and drop this too. So we will... Actually, all we should have to do is drop the four screws. And since this one is cut tapered, be sure you mark somehow the front or remember how it goes. So what I'm going to do is actually lay it on the stove top in the way that it is coming off. Since I should not bump it, it should be good. Here's that same cavity. I'm hoping that we can run that way towards the bedroom and actually hit that other side. So let me grab my fish tape and see what we can do. I have my handy dandy fish tape. What I do is I pull a section, try to straighten it out since I'm going straight across. I don't want it curving a lot. So I try to straighten as I go. And we're going six, eight feet maybe. You don't have to pull all six or eight feet, but every little bit helps. And you do have to finagle it around. It does help to have another set of hands, but I don't have those today. Let me go see if it is on the other side. And there we go, we pulled it through. All right, so once you have your fish tape in here, you can take your wire that you're going to run. And I'm just using a black and a red. 
uh, 14 gauge wire that's more than sufficient for this uh, I just chose red and black because that's what I'm used to in automotive and this is a 12 volt load so I'm just going with what I know uh, you can make it green and purple it doesn't matter as long as you know which one's which so what I do is I take the both wires and I stick it into the loop loop it around close that off take a little bit of tape wrap around the wire part since that's going to be pulling that way and then I take a little bit of the tape and I put around the actual hook part of the fish tape that way it doesn't get caught as easy and then let it start going back get you enough of a lead out so that when you're pulling on the other side it does not get caught like I said it does help to have a second set of hands for this today I do not have that it is doable by yourself so let's uh, go over there and see what we got all right so now we start pulling gently and slowly because you don't want to catch anything and pull something you shouldn't if it starts to get a little stuck just wiggle it around a little bit it'll come do not force it and there's our wire we have power so now all I have to do is take the fan down tap these wires into the power side of this one and install the other fan easy peasy before you button everything up make sure it works and it does and just like that we're done with this side let's go back in the bedroom and wire that one up okay so before you cut your wire go ahead and pull out your fan and see which side your electricity hookup is because otherwise you could cut it too short and then you're having to splice wires and that's no bueno okay so on this one the power is on the front side because the roll up is over here all of these vortexes are going to be the same but in case you get a different brand double check so what you got to do is run you enough slack I like to run it under these little flaps you can kind of see one right here run it under there and then out the front side and then still leave me a good 12 18 inches of slack just because so there you have it that is installing the vortex 2 powered fan in the non-powered bedroom vent of the grand design transcend explorer 261bh very similar setup to any of the other campers that would have that same style vent uh, and do not have a powered fan in that location uh, again this is a how we not necessarily a how to because every camper is different even di the same model can be different because the way they put things together uh, minor differences it does add up so use this as maybe a guide not an actual how to um, but all in all it took me about 30 45 minutes um, a good bit of that was having to run the other wire from the kitchen fan right here um, but that was honestly the hardest part uh, beyond that it's four screws to pull the shroud two screws to pull the screen and wiring it up 
So it's not that it's not that difficult. I believe that it could easily be done by pretty much any basic level DIYer. Uh, minimal tools are needed. I think the most specialized thing you'll need is a fish tape. Um, I have the metal one. Uh, I would recommend maybe using a fiberglass pole style. So if something were to happen and there was a loose connection in there, you wouldn't get shocked. Um, we are working with 12 volt DC. So the chances of you getting hurt is slim to none. It's never zero, but it is slim. Um, but the chances of popping a breaker or something are great. Um, so it's not terrible, but something to look out for. So if you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up. Uh, we really do appreciate that. It does help us uh, more than you know. It helps spread the word that this is something that people like to watch. If you want to see more stuff like this, click that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when we upload a video, hit the bell notification out beside that once you hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please, please, please let us know in the comment section below. We do read all of your comments. We respond when we can. So until next time, y'all have a great day.